welcome to iocs.com food tech club today's topic is spoilage of processed food let us first see what is processed food processed foods are any agricultural com commodities that have been undergone any kind of processing like washing cleaning milling cutting chopping heating pasteurizing blanching cooking canning freezing drying dehydrating mixing or packaging so any foods which undergo such processing uh, uh, stages they are called as processed foods okay so based on this processing uh, level of processing in foods nova there is one classification called nova classification so nova is the food classification given by fao that categorizes foods according to the extent and purpose of food processing rather than in terms of nutrients so basically nova classification gives us the extent and purpose of food processing okay there are four groups in nova classification first one is non processed or unprocessed or minimally processed foods second one is processed culinary ingredients and the third one is processed foods fourth one is ultra processed foods okay so today we will be focusing more on processed foods and some of ultra processed foods also let us first see what are unprocessed and minimally processed foods and what all foods come under this group the group 1 unprocessed foods are the natural foods which are the edible parts of plants such as fruits leaves stems seeds roots or they can also be from animals such as muscle offal eggs milk etc and they can also be from the sources of fungi algae and water after separation from nature basically these unprocessed foods are the natural foods which have not undergone any kinds of processing when it comes to minimally processed foods so these minimally processed foods are natural foods but they are altered a little bit by methods that include removal of inedible or unwanted parts and some of the process which is done to minimally processed foods are drying crushing grinding powder powdering etc so minimally processed foods they retain the natural characteristics of the food but they have undergone very small processing methods which will not have much of change in their nutrient content so some examples for mini minimally uh, processed foods are fresh meat vegetables whole wheat grains whole meal flour ground coffee you can see here and then pasteurized milk so minimally processed foods to be processed to extend their lifetime and enable their storage make them easier to prepare or to increase the number of ways they can be consumed for example if you take rice so you if you convert rice into Uh, the rice flour you can use it in various forms right that's why to facilitate the various ways of using a particular food item we minimally process such foods next one is processed culinary ingredients processed culinary ingredients are products extracted from natural foods or from nature by processes such as pressing grinding crushing pulverizing and refining 
Okay, basically, this processed culinary ingredients are the extracts of the natural, the group one foods. Okay, they are used in homes and restaurants to season and cook food, and thus create varied and delicious dishes and meals of all types. So, some examples are oils which are extracted from certain oil seeds and butter you get from the fat extraction of milk, lard, sugar, salt, etc. Next one is processed foods. Processed foods are products manufactured by industries with the use of salt, sugar, oil or other substances uh, which are from group 2 that is the culinary ingredients processed culinary ingredients and they are added to natural or minimally processed foods that is from group 1 to preserve or to make them more palatable or delicious they are derived from derived directly from foods and are recognized as versions of the original foods so they basically the processed foods are the different versions of original foods from group 1 and group 2. Okay. They include most freshly baked breads, canned or bottled vegetables or legumes preserved in brain, brine, then whole fruit preserved in syrup, tinned fish preserved in oil, some types of processed animal, animal foods such as ham, bacon, smoked fish and simple cheeses to which salt is added. The last category is ultra processed foods. Ultra processed foods are industrial formulations made entirely or mostly from substances extracted from foods like oils, fats, sugar, starch and proteins and they are derived from they can also be derived from food constituents like for example hydrogenated fats and modified starch or they can be synthesized in labora laboratories from food substrates substrates or other organic sources like flavor flavor enhancer colors several food additives uh, which are used to make the product hyper palatable so, the ultra processed foods, uh, they include manufacturing te techniques like extrusion, molding, pre-processing by frying, etc. So, we, under ultra processing foods, we have beverages also. So, some beverages like the soft drinks or the carbonated drinks, they all come under the ultra processed foods. So remember this last point, this ultra processed foods, so they can contain group foods in a very small proportion or even the group 1 food may be absent also. Okay, so these are ultra processed foods. Let us see some examples for ultra processed foods we have a lot of examples for uh, under this category to name a few carbonated soft drinks sweet fatty or salty packaged snacks candies mass produced packaged breads and buns remember if it is freshly ba uh, baked breads it comes under processed foods or if it is under uh, uh, fresh if it is baked in bulk and it is sold uh, in bulk for um, with some preservatives so so that the shelf life is increased for some days then it comes under the ultra processed food okay so mass produced packaged breads buns cookies pastries cakes cake mixes then margarine and other spreads sweetened breakfast cereals and fruit yogurt and energy drinks Pre-prepared meat, cheese, pasta and pizza dishes, poultry and fish, nuggets and sticks, sausages, 
burgers, hot dogs and other reconstituted uh, meat products, powdered and packaged instant soups, noodles and desserts, baby formula and many other types of products. They are the ultra processed foods or products. Okay, let us come to the main topic that is spoilage of processed foods. Okay, the first one we will be seeing is the spoilage of bread that is especially the freshly baked bread. So, in uh, while making the bread, breads are baked at very high temperature as we all know. Thereby, there are less chances of survival of, survival of microorganisms. Thus, the contamination usually occurs when cooling is done as well as during packing, handling and also from the external environment. Spoilage of bread is usually of two types. So, we can two, see two types of sp uh, spoilage that is moldiness and ropiness. Okay. Other than this, so the common uh, bread uh, spoilage causing molds are Rhizopus stolonifer. Remember this name because this is the most common bread uh, mold and that's why it is called as the bread mold. Okay. Rhizopus stolonifer is called as the bread mold. So, they cause uh, such black mold which you can observe here. Then other molds are penicillium expansum. So, they call, cause blue molds like this. Then aspergillus niger. Also, mucor and geotrichum, they can develop on the bread. Okay, let us see about the ropiness and uh, uh, other defects of bread. Ropiness in bread is usually due to bacterial growth and is considered more prevalent in homemade breads. Okay, it is more prevalent in homemade breads where very less of preservatives are added, right? The chief causative organism is Bacillus subtilis uh, or Bacillus lichenoformis. These are spore forming bacteria with their spores surviving baking temperatures also. These spores can germinate into vegetative cells once they get suitable conditions as heat treatment activates them. So, you can see ropey appearance in this image I think. Okay. So, this is due to the organisms like Bacillus subtilis or Lichenoformis. In ropiness, so this ropiness is basically caused by the hydrolysis of blood, bread uh, protein and also the starch okay so the hydrolysis of bread flour protein that is gluten takes place by proteinases enzymes produced by the bacillus species so it also causes starch hydrolysis by amylase amylases enzyme which encra encourages the ropiness the manifestation of ropiness is development of yellow to brown color and soft and sticky surface. It is also this kind of uh, defect also associated with bad odors. The next type of spoilage is chalky bread. Okay. So, this is uh, caused by growth of yeast uh, or fungi like endomycosis fibuligera and trichosporon variable. This spoilage is characterized by development of white chalk like spots which you can observe here in the picture. Okay, this is caused by endomycosis, uh, endomycosis fibuligera and trichosporon variable. And the next one is red bread or bloody bread. So, this is caused due to the uh, organism Serratia marcescens. Okay, so this is caused by Serratia marcescens. This organi organism produces brilliant red color, which you can see here. 
So this is very uh, rare. This is very rarely seen in uh, bread, but still it happens by the contamination of bacteria, Cerasia, Marthesins, um, the which produces brilliant red color on the bread, which gives blood-like appearance. Okay. So some other uh, organisms which uh, cause pigmentation on uh, bread is Neurospora and Geotrichum, which may also be involved in imparting pigmentation during spoilage of bread. Okay, that's about the spoilage of bread. Next one is spoilage in meat products. So let us see the spoilage in uh, different types of meat, processed meat products. First one being hamburger. So hamburger held at room temperature usually putrefies, but at a room temperature, at a temperature near uh, freezing, it ac acquires a stale, sour odor. The sourness at low temperatures is caused chiefly by species like Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter, Moraxilla. With help from lactic acid bacteria. So the basically the sourness is caused by Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter and uh, Moxarella with the help of lactic acid bacteria in hamburger. So some other uh, organisms, species which grow on uh, hamburger are alkaligens, Micrococcus, then Flavobacterium species. Next is about pork sausage. Pork sausage is a perishable food that must be preserved by refrigeration and then can be kept only a relatively short time without spoilage. Souring the most common type of spoilage at refrigerator temperature of 0 to 11 degrees Celsius has been attributed to growth and acid production by lactobacilli and leuconostox. Okay. Although we have other species like Microbacterium and Microcorcus which grow at high, higher storage temperature. So at refrigeration temperature we we can see the growth of lactobacilli and leuconostoc and at high, temp high storage temperatures so it, uh, the pork sausages may be contaminated with microbacterium and micrococcus. The encased pork sausages especially the little pig type are subjected to slime formation on the outside of the casing on long storage or to variously colored spots due to mold growth. So, mold uh, like alternaria has been found to cause small dark spots on refrigerated links. So, you can see the mold growth uh, in the given pictures. Okay. So, th this is also associated with slime formation. Next one is dried beef. These are made spongy by species like bacillus or they can be made sour by a variety of bacteria and then they can cause discoloration, red discoloration by halobacterium salinarium uh, or a red bacillus species and blue color can be seen due to the presence of pseudomonas Syncyania and then purplish color is caused due to penicillium spinulosum and uh, other discolorations can also be seen due to the species of Rhodotorula yeast. Gas in jars of chipped dried beef has been attributed to a denitrifying aerobic organism that resembles Pseudomonas fluorescens. Okay. Then the gases are uh, oxides of nitrogen. Bacillus species have been known to produce carbon dioxide in the jars. So you can see the spoiled beef hams in this jar. 
Next one is about cured bacon. Molds are the chief spoilage organisms on the cured bacon. Most trouble is uh, encountered in late summer and early fall with species of Aspergillus, Alternaria, Mon Monilia, Odium, Fusarium, Mucor, Rhizopus, Botrytis and Penicillium. The surface flora of bacon may also contain Streptococcus faecalis, Micrococci and Staphylococci. In sliced bacons, uh, the deterioration may, may be caused by oxidizing and lipo lipolytic bacteria on long storage. Oxidizing and sulfide forming bacteria also may be concerned in producing a poor color in the flesh part of bacon. Um, although wrong concentration of nitrate are more often responsible. Chromogenic bacteria may also cause discoloration in certain areas of sliced bacons and then a yellowish brown discoloration showing the presence of tyrosine has been blamed on proteolytic bacteria. So proteolytic bacteria can cause the uh, yellowish brown discoloration due to the presence of an amino acid called tyrosine. Next one is refrigerated packaged meats. Packaging films permitting good penetration of oxygen and hence of carbon dioxide favor the more aerobic bacteria such as Pseudomonas, Acinetobacter uh, and Moraxilla and their production of, of flavors, slime and even putrefaction. This spoilage is much like that in the wrapped, unwrapped meat. Films with poor gas penetration encourage lactic acid bacteria, especially when combined with vacuum packaging. So basically in re refrigerated uh, packaged meat, if the uh, packaging material permits uh, oxygen or uh, carbon dioxide, then it will lead to the growth of Pseudomonas acinetobacter and Moraxilla. Uh, if the packaging material is good enough to not allow oxygen, then uh, the lactic acid bacteria will uh, come into action in the absence of oxygen. Okay, uh, So contamination should be avoided or it should be processed properly. These ba bacteria in time cause souring, slime and uh, atypical flavor. Okay, not typical flavor. Okay, next is about spoilage of milk products. So first we will see about the spoilage of cream. The cream is a milk product made from a butter fat layer deposited on the top of milk before homogenization. Okay, so only before hom homogenization you can separate cream, right? After homogenization, so you can't get separate the fat from the other uh, uh, carbohydrates or other molecules in the milk. So cream is got before homo homogenization uh, in the upper butter fat layer. Cooled milk is used for the production of cream. That's why psychrotrophic bacteria so the bacteria which can survive in lower temperatures they are called as psychrotrophic bacteria so such bacteria are the main cause for <coughs> excuse me main cause of foliage in cream uh, and example uh, examples are pseudomonas alkaligens acinetobacter aeromonas and acromobacter at room temperature, the main spoilage causing organisms are Corinia bacterium, <coughs> excuse me, Bacillus, Micrococcus, Lactobacillus, and Staphylococcus organisms. 
the cream is highly susceptible to pathogenic microorganisms also okay so some examples for pathogenic microorganisms are e coli salmonella typhi murium and listeria monocytogenes and some of the defects in cream uh, and uh, related microorganisms are given here first one is bitty cream which is caused by more uh, listeria monocytogenes and bacillus cereus the bitterness or thinning in sterilized cream is due to the presence of bacillus lichenniformis bacillus coagulans and bacillus subtilis then fruity flavor or uh, gas formation is caused by candida lipolyticum and geotrichum candidum then surface stains on creams are caused by penicillium species and then foamy appearance on the cream is by candida and torlopsis okay next is about spoilage of butter butter is a milk product made by the separation of milk and sub, uh, subsequent churning of the cream the main source of microorganisms found in butter is cream okay we studied the spoilage of cream right which is starting material for butter therefore if the cream is contaminated then the butter will also be contaminated right that's why uh, all the cyclotrophic um, organisms we saw there in the cream spoilage so we can see here also that is pseudomonas alkali gens acetatobacter aeromonas and acromobacter the primary spoilage organism in butter are molds such as thamnidium cladosporium and aspergillus so here also we can see the pathogenic microorganisms like listeria monocytogenes brucella mycobacterium uh, campylobacter jejuni ersinia enterocolitica and salmonella typhi murium yeah so some kinds of defects in uh, butter and the related microorganisms are given here first one is surface discoloration and taints in butter so that is caused due to the presence of bacteria like pseudomonas putrefactions uh, flavobacterium species alteromonas and then uh, the molds commonly found on butter are penicillium aspergillus mucor cladosporium rhizospora species then black discoloration discoloration in butter is caused due to pseudomonas nigrificans then off flavor is caused due to the presence of pseudomonas species and lactococcus lactis then lipolytic spoilage is caused by rhodotorula cryptococcus torulopsis and then candida lipolytica then yeast smell in the butter is caused due to the presence of geotrichum candidum okay next is spoilage of cheese cheese is a fermented milk product that is made by coagulating the casein present in milk by using the enzyme rennet the ripening in cheese is achieved due to many beneficial microorganisms okay the actions of many activities of many uh, beneficial microorganisms so they have certain proteolytic and lipolytic activities which gives the characteristic flavor or taste in the cheese okay so we have different kinds of cheese uh, based on the moisture content Uh, like soft cheese semi hard cheese hard cheese etc so in that the low moisture content of hard and semi hard ripened cheeses makes them susceptible to fungi compared to bacteria soft and fresh cheeses are spoiled easily due to their higher ph moisture moisture content and lower salinity the bacterial cheese spoilage is caused by clostridium species 
Bacillus polymyxia, Flavobacterium, Pseudomonas species, Alkaligens, and Acromobacter. And the yeast, which are commonly seen in cheese, spoiled cheese, are Candida species, Debaromyces, uh, Hanseni, Geotrichum candidum, and Pecia species. And the molds seen in che spoiled cheese are Penicillium species and Cladosporium species. So here also we can see some growth of pathogenic bacteria uh, like Listeriomonas cytogenes and Salmonella species and E. coli. Okay, next is about spoilage of ice cream. Ice cream is a frozen milk product. It includes includes various nutritious uh, ingredients like nuts, fruit pulp, confectionery products, eggs and egg products. Being a nutritious food, ice cream serves as a great medium for microbial growth due to the high nutritive value, almost neutral pH and long storage duration. It is a frozen milk product, hence ice cream spoilage is mainly caused by what kind of organisms? Psychotropic organisms or psychotropes, such as you already know that Pseudomonas, Flavobacterium, Alkaligens, Listeriomonas cytogenes, all these psychotropes cause spoilage in ice creams. Certain uh, molds such as Aspergillus, Fusarium, Geotrichum, Mucor, Penicillium and yeast such as Zygosaccharomyces, Saccharomyces, Cryptococcus also cause ice cream spoilage. Major pathogenic bacteria found in ice cream are Listeria monocytogenes, Salmonella species and E. coli. The defect found in ice cream after spoilage or during spoilage are bitterness, off flavor, rancidity, greenish pigments, discoloration and surface taints. Okay, so this is the last topic that is spoilage in canned food. Canning is one of the important methods of packaging food for long-term storage. The food is stored in metallic containers along with the heat treatment. There is always a chance that microorganisms may survive if the heat treatment is not proper, thereby leading to spoilage of food. So, heat treatment is very important here. Okay, meeting the required temperature during the heat treatment is very important. Usually, the indices, uh, incidences of food spoilage in cans are very low. If happens, it might be due to the chemical spoilage or biological spoilage. So, first one is about chemical spoilage. The chemical spoilage in most cases is due to the production of hydrogen gas which is produced in cans because of the action of acid of the food on the iron or the metal of can. Okay, The food inside the can will react with the, uh, the metallic ca can okay, that will give the hydrogen gas. And this kind of spoilage is called as hydrogen swell because the gas production swells the can and the can looks somewhat like this. Rather than looking flat, it looks bulged. Okay, so this kind of defect is called as hydrogen swell in cans, spoiled cans. So this occurs due to the following factors. First one is increased storage temperature. So, this increased storage te temperature will uh, drive the acids in the food to react with the metals. Okay. Or vice versa. 
then increased acidity in uh, food then improper exhaust so exhaust of unwanted uh, gases in the from the can if it is not done properly then also this can happen presence of soluble sulfur and phosphorus compounds and improper timing and lacquering of can at internal surfaces okay next is about biological spoilage so we all know that the biological spoilage is caused due to the microbial activity in the cans in heat treated cans the growth of microorganisms occur due to either due to the leakage of can or due to under processing of can so leakage can happen uh, because of manufacturing defects punctures or rough handling uh, eh, uh, punctures or rough handling okay you can see the uh, leakage from this can in the picture bacteria are introduced into the can by either in holes or improper seams even in the seamings you can see in the seam the top the in the seaming uh, uh, region there also if the seaming is not done properly the leakage can ha happen or the microorganisms get, can get into the can leakage may also be responsible for release of vacuum which can favor the growth of microorganisms in the air also presence of low heat resistance or uh, resistant organisms usually indicates leakage of can okay those organisms which cannot uh, sustain high heat treatment if they are also present in the uh, cans that means so this is the the spoilage is due to low heat resistant organisms and it is due mainly due to the leakage of cans second one is under -proce processing it includes sub optimal heat treatment faulty retort operations excessive microbial load and contamination in product uh, change in consistency of the product also okay next is by spoilage by thermophilic spore forming bacteria so this thermophilic uh, thermophilic thermo means temperature philic means loving so if these organisms can sustain high uh, temperature treatment also okay so they will uh, uh, leave their spores in the cans and these spores will grow into organisms whenever they get the suitable environment okay so the defects caused by such organisms are flat sore spoilage so in flat spore uh, sore spoilage what happens is soaring the acid production happens inside the can but there is no gas production okay that that is why the even if the acid has been produced the can looks flat itself it won't look bulged uh, as seen in hydrogen swell it is not seen bulged it is uh, the Oh, from outside the can looks flat okay this is caused by bacillus species next is thermophilic anaerobic spoilage which is caused by clostridium thermosaccharolyticum then sulfur stinker spoilage which is caused by desulfoto maculum nigricans so this desulfoto maculum nigricans they uh, cause Uh, this kind of spoilage it is named because these organisms uh, release hydrogen sulfide during the spoilage process which gives a very bad odor stinking odor okay that's why it is called as sulfur stinker spoilage next is by spoilage uh, by the mesophilic spore formers Okay, bacillus and clostridium species are involved in this type of spoilage. Next, spoilage by non-spore former, uh, formers. Presence of non-spore formers in cans indicates indicate 
post processing contamina contamination why because if the, the such non spore formers uh, are there in the cans that means the heat treatment is done properly but the contamination has happened after the processing okay while uh, packaging and all while uh, uh, washing the packaging or while transportation during this time uh, due to some defect in the cans this type of spoilage can be happening the organisms uh, which cause this type of spoilage is micrococcus leuconostoc streptococcus thermophile lactobacillus mycobacterium etc spoilage by yeast yeast and their spores are not thermotolerant thus they are not found in suitably heat treated cans their presence indicates under processing or post pasteurization content you are uh, learning with iiocs.com food tech club if you have any query you can call the number on the screen thank you